Image to image is one of the most powerful features within Automatic One, allowing you the ability to take an existing image and modify it through prompts via a process known as in-painting. In this tutorial, I'll be taking you through all of the options with examples so you can spend less time reading and more time creating. A shout out to the supporters, and once you've liked this video, consider supporting as well. But enough talking, let me give it to you bite-sized. So the biggest difference between the text to image and image to image tab is this image box, which is where we place the image we want to modify. This is done by dragging and dropping the image in question, and you can then combine it with prompts and other tools to adjust it further. The prompt box operates the same, but instead of generating a fresh image from your prompts alone, it will influence how your existing image should change to match the prompt based on your denoising strength. Here I'm describing the same woman in the image, but with some details adjusted and we get that smile coming through while keeping most of the image the same as the reference. The negative prompt tells the software what to avoid in your image and this works the same as text to image. In this example, I've stated that I don't want any red and the higher the weighting, the less red we get in our image. Interrogate Clip is a powerful tool which will take your given image and suggest a series of prompts that will attempt to replicate the image you provided. In this instance, and receiving written prompts for a checkpoint that uses tagging, so the results will differ greatly from the original. Deep Buru is like Interrogate Clip, but this will attempt to generate a series of prompts from an image based on Danburu tags. Danburu is an image board for art, mostly leaning towards anime, gaming, and some non safe for work material. Because this has given us tags, we're getting a far better result, which matches our image more closely than Interrogate Clip. You then have Copy Image 2. Alongside the list of locations, you can send the image. This is an alternative to dragging and dropping the image, but either method will work, so let's break down what each of these tabs are. Sketch will allow you to draw on your provided reference image and then use those adjustments to influence the new image. For example, we could paint our clothing red and intensify that colour on only the mask areas, ignoring our hair and other non-related parts of our image. InPaint is one of the most powerful tools in Stable Diffusion as this will allow you to mask a portion of your image and use your prompts to generate a new image in that specific mask location. For example, I can mask the eyes and specify a blue colour and here you can see both the mask and the resulting image. Under InPaint, you will find some additional options unique to this section of Stable Diffusion, so let's quickly cover these while we're here. Mask Blur will apply a blur to the edge of the mask and if I bring up the mask on screen, a sharper mask makes the in-painting stronger in that area, while a blurrier mask lessens the effect, removing it completely at higher values, but can also help blend the in-painted area in some cases. Then looking at our mask mode, we have two to choose from. In-paint masked will ensure that only the masked portion of the image is filled with the newly generated content. The in-paint not masked option will ensure that everything outside of the masked area is filled with the newly generated content. The white area is what is masked, while the black area is the unmasked portion, because we're inverting our mask, and this can be useful for masking everything except for the specified locations, saving you time. Then for our mask content, Fill will draw your prompted details within a blurred version of the masked area of your image, leaving some room for stable diffusion to interpret the details because you're making adjustments based on what is already there. Original will fill the masked portion of your image with your prompted changes based on the original content of the section to be altered. This is useful because you're changing what is already there without blurring or doing anything to change it beforehand. Latent noise will fill the masked space with random noise and then generate an image within that space from that noise. This is similar to when you generate an image with a low sampling step, which produces a very noisy image, but it becomes clearer the more steps you use. Latent Nothing will fill the masked area with a flat colour, made up of the prompts you're using to fill the space, and it will then build up the image from there based on the number of sampling steps you're using. In Paint Area allows you to specify whether to modify the whole image or just the mask area when applying the in painting process. This is because making certain adjustments like resolution changes, even when using a mask, can change the resolution of your entire image. By selecting whole picture, you can ensure that the resolution for the masked area is in line with the rest of your image, but by choosing only mask, you can ensure that the resolution you choose only applies to that mask portion, which can help you get more detail on lower resolution portions of your image. 
Only mask padding pixel determines how much of the area around the mask should be used to generate the new image, which will help blend both the surrounding area and the image within the mask by better understanding the context of the image. InPaint Sketch allows you to draw a mask or with the added ability to include colors, which can help stable diffusion understand an object much better by recognizing both the color, shape, and description of the mask. In this example, I'm turning our shirt blue but even if I remove the blue from our prompt, it still recognizes the color of the mask. InPaint Upload allows you to use your own custom mask for your reference image, which is more powerful than hand painting, as you get access to the same features, but you can create a custom mask in an image editor that's much more accurate and fit for purpose. Batch is used for generating multiple images at once by specifying an input directory where your reference photos are located, an output directory, which is where the generated images will go, and you can even reference the location of a folder for the InPaint mask and ControlNet mask. This is done by specifying the folder locations for your outputs, inputs, and masks, ensuring that your masks have the same name as the image you want to associate them with. You can see on my screen how I'm using the name image and then a number to specify the sequence, and my mask also has the same name and number as the corresponding image they should be applied to. For the resize mode, just resize would ensure that your generated image fits within the specified resolution, even if that means stretching and skewing the image in ways which may look unnatural. Crop and resize will ensure that your generated image fits within the specified resolution, even if it has to crop certain portions of the image. Resize and fill will ensure that your entire generated image fits within the specified resolution, even if it has to fill in empty space. Just Resize Latent Upscale is the same as Just Resize, but this doesn't use one of Stable Diffusion's upscale models and instead uses encoders and latent space. The rest of the features I'll be covering from here on out were also covered in my text to image video, so consider checking that out for the examples which may help your understanding. Sampling method is an algorithm used for denoising an image, or in plain terms, Stable Diffusion correcting its mistakes by generating new samples of an image in steps and giving you a cleaner image the more steps you have. Sampling steps are the number of times the sampling method will produce an improved image and the higher this value, the cleaner the final result and the lower the value, the more noisy the final result. Restore faces can improve faces in generated images that have been distorted or messed up by stable diffusion. It's controversial because it can produce worse results depending on the type of checkpoint you're using being better suited for realistic ones. Tiling is used to ensure that images can be tiled, or in plain English, to ensure that generated images can be placed next to one another seamlessly. Resize 2 lets us choose the size we want our generated image to be by specifying a width and a height value, and Resize by lets us choose our resolution via a multiplier, which multiplies the original size of the image by our specified number. Batch count determines how many sets of images you will generate by multiplying the batch count by the batch size, while batch size determines how many images should be generated in a single batch. So if I have a batch count of 2 and a batch size of 3, I'm generating 2 sets of 3 images. The CFG scale will determine how strongly the image generated should conform to your prompt and how much it should be completely unrelated to your prompt. Most checkpoints suggest the ideal CFG scale for their particular model, but keeping it at a modest value, between 5 to 9, tends to lead to the best results. The seed is a random number which determines the variation of your generated image, and using the same seed should give you the same image each time you generate an image, providing you don't change any of the settings. On the topic of seeds, this dice icon will set your seed to minus 1, which is a special value that will select a random seed each time you generate an image. This green recycle option will reuse the seed from your last generated image, which means you won't have to copy and paste the seed from the image file's name. Variation seed allows you to select a second seed, which can be combined with your main seed for the purposes of combining two separate variations of the same image into one. You can see both our original seed and variation seed, and then the combined image in this example. The variation strength controls how strong the blending is between the two seeds, with a low value giving you the image from your seed, and a higher value mixing in more of that variation seed. When you change the height or width for your generated image, it will also change the variation you get, even if you use the same seed. To avoid this, 
we can use the resize from width and height option. So even if we change the resolution of our image, we can use the variation from a different resolution. Stable Diffusion also allows you to utilize custom scripts and comes with a few installed for you to use. You then have two options that show up when you generate an image called Interrupt and Skip. Interrupt will stop the generation of all images, while Skip will skip the generation of the current image, then move on to the next one when generating multiple images through methods like Batch. This blue arrow icon will read and apply the prompts and settings from your last generated image, providing the prompt box is clear of any text. You can also use this to take generation data copied from your prompt box and apply it to the appropriate fields. The bin icon will delete both your prompts and negative prompts from the prompt box, but your settings will not be deleted. The styles box has undergone a change where you can now create styles in a much easier way by clicking this pencil icon and entering your prompts alongside the name for the style and pressing save. You can also now delete or edit your styles all within this window, which is an amazing improvement to the feature. When a style is selected from the drop down list, it will be applied at the end of your prompt by default. You can apply the contents of a style directly to your prompts by using the notepad icon within the style itself. Lastly, you can use the name of the style in curly brackets to specify a position for that style within your prompts, like how wildcards work. This will give you a greater degree of control over your prompting when saving styles you like and applying them to your work. You then have the classic image box, which is where your generated image will show up when it's completed. You have a few additional options when you click through the image, such as toggling the zoom view, previewing the image through tiling, saving the image to your computer, and exiting the zoom view. You have the folder icon, which is used to open the directory where the image is located, and you can access all image types here. The save disk icon will save your image and an Excel spreadsheet of the generation data to the stable diffusion folder. This is different to the output folder where generated images are automatically stored. You then have this filing cabinet icon, which is used to save your images into a zip folder with the generation data, similar to the previous option, but with a zip file. The canvas icon will send your image to the image to image tab, and you can also send the image to the inpaint tab. These options are useful for sending new images to these tabs without having to drag and drop them. Lastly, the ruler is used to send the image and its generation data to the extras tab, where you can access upscaling and other options you have installed, which use that tab. But I hope you found that useful. And if you did, like the video and subscribe for more upcoming content. This is Bite Size Genius, and I hope you enjoyed.